Well, uh, good afternoon, and we're uh, hosting a, a joint um, press press availability today. And I just want to reiterate uh, some of the comments that were made earlier. I think you have what something unique this session, which is uh, just a maybe not just this session, but a very very highly collaborative, friendly, healthy relationship between the House and Senate and the governor's office. And there's give and take um, and that type of thing, but but really such an excellent relationship that I think as a result of that will lead to some special results for the people of Florida and the things we're able to accomplish this year. And so with that um, short introduction, I'd like to open up to questions to either of us. Well, thank you for the question. I support the bill. Um, as you all know, that my number one priority was an inclusion in whatever legislation we carry for an exception for rape and incest. And Senator Grohl agreed to put it in her bill, and that's why I'm supporting it. I have not done a vote count. The bill was just filed today, and Senator Rawl will, will work the members, and we'll see what happens. Speaker, I heard you had mentioned that you want to, I want to make sure I have it right, that you want to get rid of Enterprise Florida. Is that correct? I want to make sure I have your, your comment. Can you just elaborate on your Enterprise Florida? Sure. I mean, and as I said in my remarks, I think it's always important for us to assess what we're getting right, what we're getting wrong. A lot of taxpayer money goes to Enterprise Florida, I think $13 million. And, uh, and if there are valuable uh, functions that they have in, in certain places, then we're going to look at that, you know, openly, honestly, with our Senate partners, with the governor's office. And if there's a reason to retain some of that in into DEO, then we'll do that. Um, but the idea that uh, that it is um, uh, delivered on its promises, I think, in my opinion, is is uh, is just not the case. And so it's time to look at: Do we really need a separate? Uh, board with with um, uh, people who uh, are there, uh, or can we more streamline what we're doing and, and, and really not waste taxpayer money? Yeah, yeah I mean, I, the the bill's just been filed. I don't know if you had a chance to look at it, but there will be yeah, some adjustments. There'll be some adjustments to it, um, but it does it both in, in the Enterprise Florida uh, entity as it currently exists. It takes those positions that we decide all, all of us collectively after we go through the session uh, that that ought to be preserved that maybe you're doing a good work and then the rest of that would be shut down saving the taxpayers a lot of money but I think it's important to say it can be a, uh, devoted towards higher priorities if you go to anybody in the house chambers from our most conservative to our most liberal they will all give you a, a list of their top three or four or five priorities, none of which are going to be really Enterprise Florida. And so this is money we can use for education, for housing, for um, a, a whole number of things that are really, really important to everyday Floridians and not, in my opinion, wasting it on corporate welfare uh, type schemes. And so the bill will also pull out a lot of the old programs that we haven't funded for what, a decade now almost and yet as the governor said today we have record i mean record in migration the capital inflow into the state of florida is far and away the biggest of any of the 50 states in the country without any of those incentives and so for that reason it has outlived its usefulness and so apart from particular offices or functions that may have value um, uh, we are going to shut that down. That's that's our intention. But again, working with our partners, we'll make adjustments and we'll land in a place that's fair to everybody. Oh, wait. Okay. Uh, it That's a good question. Uh, I was in the legislature uh, when that bill came up, and I had concerns about it, and, and I'll tell you why. It, the way 
the way the law is, you have to be three years, um, it, you'd have to go through three years of high school, in you know, Florida high school. So you could be 15 and come to Florida and go to school for three years and then get in-state tuition. The proponents of the bill back then were talking about babies that were brought over, you know, they, they had no choice, they were coming over in their, ma their parents' arms, they were toddlers. But when it turned out being a 15-year-old could actually come themselves. So, so I did not support it then. I think, you know, we're gonna have to look at it, but if you, were, if you came over as a, a newborn uh, and, you've been, and we have educated you for, you know, um, kindergarten, uh, elementary, middle school, high school, it's something we really should consider. And I'm looking forward to the members uh, weighing in on it. Um, the governor's made uh, comments recently that he would support open carry uh, being left, um, as well as you know, some conservative critics saying this is uh, calling out water down version of, of constitutional carry. Um, why is it open carry in the bill? Um, and what do you have anything to say about you know, the government expressing its support for uh, something like that being included? Well, look, we, the, the reason is because we respect the 160 House and Senate members who have a wide variety of different ideas on that topic, um, but what I will say is that typically we see scenarios in which someone who is a hardened criminal goes out and commits gun violence and the reflexive response is let's take away the gun rights of law-abiding men and women to defend themselves. <laughs> and, and so, and, and as a result, we have fallen into, well, you want these five things, we'll agree to two, and we're, we're going backwards. This is important for everybody who believes in the Second Amendment to know that we are moving forwards on the Second Amendment. We are reclaiming and advancing the rights of men and women to protect and defend themselves and those they love. And so the fact that it doesn't include open carry, you know, open uh, could, could be the cherry on top for some, but, but it, in essence, this is accomplishing what constitutional carry is, which is you do not need a separate permission slip from a department like Agri Department of Agriculture, as long as you pass a background check and you meet the other requirements that we have to carry concealed. And the governor's right, I heard some of his remarks that in other states, it's the, the perspective has been the opposite, where they're more comfortable with open carry and less comfortable with concealed carry. So the bottom line, though, is after this bill passes, is that people will have a constitutional right to carry for their own self-defense and, and those of others. Uh, and the fact that it doesn't include open carry still gives them the right to carry uh, without that permission slip. Senator, this is a related question. Uh, that is this. Do you think that the criminal statute is Yeah, um, I'll answer that because uh, that was my my suggested adi addition to the bill. When when it came up last summer, and and members were uh, speaking with me about the fact that they wanted to file um, a constitutional carry bill, I asked, you know, uh, what are we going to do about the school safety and some of these other issues? There was no in intent other than to put good language with good language. And so all of that language is something that I worked on, and I asked the speaker to include it in their bill, and uh, our, our Senate sponsor to include it in, in our bill. And he, here's why I support the permitless carry, because the sheriffs, whom I deeply respect, who are in the business, who understand the issues, do not support open carry in the state of Florida. They support permitless carry. Their definition of constitutional carry is you don't need a permission slip to carry a concealed weapon. That's why I support the uh, permitless carry bill. You don't support open carry, do you? I will support what the sheriffs of this state, who are the experts. I am not an expert. I don't know one end of a gun from another, so I certainly want to um, support the experts, and that's uh, why I support the permitless carry. And the, and the reality is, this bill basically says you do, need the, you do not need the government's permission to carry your weapon. That, in my mind, is constitutional carry. The, the idea of linking them to school safety measures, I guess, you kind of the wrong term, but 
You know what? I never thought of that. That just came up recently. I was just on. A, okay, I, I really didn't. I was. I remember saying to the members, "We got to take care of the kids." The important part for me about that bill is we, and you all know because I have been supporting the issues dealing with mental health in our schools, with kids coming to school with issues, and disrupting the classrooms and making threats. And frankly, one of the biggest problems right now is if a student makes a credible threat in, 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 in some of our schools, the document is like a piece of paper in a folder. And if that student moves to another jurisdiction, their, their grades go with them, their <laughs> athletic accomplishments go with them, but if they've made a credible threat against another student, it stays. So I was, I was appalled when I heard that. I said, well, okay, let's, let's do that. And uh, so that's why it's in the bill. It had nothing to do with sweetening the pot or whatever. Our members are going to vote uh, their conscience how they feel uh, about this bill. But I feel really comfortable about the whole package, and, I, and I'm going to vote for it. Well, I think we'll have, I know we'll have a uh, trigger language in the bill that will, you know, mean that we'll await the court's decision. And if the court comes back, as I hope that they will, and determines that uh, the right to privacy in the state constitution relates to informational privacy, like data privacy and the things that we'll be debating this year, and not to abortion, then the law will take effect. If they do not, and they go the other way and, and uphold pr a prior precedent, on that issue, then the bill will not go into effect. And so this is going ahead and having the conversation about where we, we want to land in Florida. And as the Senate president has discussed, uh, that's where we, we've landed. Can you talk about libel laws? Is that a priority to reform libel laws in Florida? And I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about that. You know, I'd, I, and I, I, I will, but I wanted to say something too about, you know, the, the bill, the abortion bill. My philosophy as a Senate president is I've got uh, 39 other individuals who all have ideas and, and have initiatives that they want to sponsor. It's not my role to say you can't file this bill or you can't file that bill. Every senator has the right to file a bill. And you can see they run the gamut. Every single bill is going to get referenced. And it'll be up to the committee chairs as to whether to hear them. Senator Grawl had an, an idea for the bill that she was going to file. She came to me and I said, if you do file it, that's your choice, that's your right. I would, I would ask you to include an exception for rape and incest. That's my number one priority. And she said, I will do that. That's the way we roll. Uh, with regard to the defamation bill and the libel bill, um, it's across the board. It, you know, er, there are so many, whether you are an elected official, a private individual, it's like open season. People are saying whatever they want, whether it's true or not. The other day, I got a mailer that had a picture of, of me and the speaker, a picture they took of me and the speaker at my designation where I was hugging him and saying, congratulations, and he was hugging me. They took me out of it and they put in President Biden. And then they sent a mailer saying that I was supporting him for something. That's wrong. Not only is it wrong, like, I look really big and he looked small and I was kind of embarrassed about that. But, you know, those are the kind of things that we have got to put a stop to. And it's whether it's a private individual or an elected official, you can't, you, you shouldn't be able to just say things that are totally wrong and get away with it. So, so on that notion, does that mean, do either one of you think that uh, Fox News deserves to be, should be found guilty of defamation for the fact that they knowingly said things about the election of 2020 that they knew were wrong? I, mean, I think that's I, th I think that's the the point, um, and so. Well, I, they're being sued for defamation under the under the old standard, but it yeah. would seem that if your bill were to pass, there would be a lower standard, so maybe they would be held more accountable for that. Maybe and I'm asking if you think that's a good thing. Maybe I mean I think it, the the idea of this bill I think in large part is to give the court a chance to revisit that that prior standard given the climate we're in today. But let me also say, because uh, I know you guys asked the governor about this this bill that may suggest that bloggers should be registered, that is that'd be something I categorically oppose. 
I mean, press freedoms and that, that type of thing is, I don't think, belongs anywhere near, uh, uh, you know, passing either the House or Senate. And so I think that's, uh, that's another example of where we're infringing on the First Amendment. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.